Hey guys, what's up, what's happening? The King of Games 98 here at your service. How you doing? Hope you are doing good and staying safe during these very weird, unfortunate times we are in right now. And thank you for tuning in again to a new video on my YouTube channel. I, it, it just occurred to me that I actually never say that in any of my videos thank you for watching or thank you for tuning in so thank you for watching and thank you for tuning in to a new video on my youtube channel and for today's video it is going to be gaming related it is an unboxing of a video game controller so uh real quick i want to give a little backstory on to why i wanted this and why i bought it and then we're going to actually get to the uh, unboxing of this controller. So, the Nintendo GameCube has a special place in my heart. Because technically it was the second video game console I ever owned. The first video game console I ever owned, if you want to call it a console or a handheld, because technically it is a handheld, was the Pearl Pink Game Boy Advance SP. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you heard that correctly. I had the Game Boy Advance SP in the pearl pink color. And I was rocking that in fifth grade. And I'll tell you what, you know, I did get made fun of a little bit for that. But you know what? Uh, what I ended up finding out later on in life, that that was the model AGS-101 Game Boy Advance SP. In other words, that specific model Game Boy Advance SP had the brightest backlit screen they had ever made. So everyone who made fun of me in fifth grade can suck it, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, anywho, so as, as I was saying, the, the Nintendo GameCube was the second console I ever owned. I specifically had the platinum silver color Nintendo GameCube, and I absolutely freaking loved it. I'll never forget the day when my dad brought it home and surprised me with it, and he had a copy of Super Mario Sunshine with it. Oh my god, it, it was just, it was just bliss. I absolutely loved it. I still love the GameCube to this day, and believe it or not, I still own my original childhood Platinum Silver GameCube console. Uh, unfortunately, it is boxed up and is sitting in my closet right now with some other consoles that I wanted to box up and keep nice and safe. And so there, it's, it's currently sitting in my closet right now or else I would get it out and show you on camera. But unfortunately, I can't do that. So you'll just have to bear with me here. So... I absolutely love collecting for the GameCube, whether it's games or controllers, you know, accessories, travel bags, whatever. I, I just love collecting for the GameCube. And so, not that long ago, I started seeing a lot of YouTube gamers that I follow, or no, that I am subscribed to, that's that's the correct terminology, started getting this type of controller and were getting all hype about it and started doing unboxings uh, on it and were, you know, talking about it and really making a big fuss over it. And when I watched a few of the YouTube gamers that I am subscribed to and watched their videos, I understood why this is a big deal. And after watching two different videos by two different people and hearing what they had to say about it, I was like, I want one. I want one of them because I don't own a controller like that for GameCube, and so I want one. And so without further ado, this leads into why I bought this. Okay, so what we have here in front of us is the old school brand 
digital GameCube controller. Now, some of you who are watching this video and maybe don't really know that much about what you're looking at in front of you, this controller, or maybe you just don't really know that much about your GameCube facts or, you know, information, that's fine too. I'm going to real quick go into a brief explanation of why this is, this controller is a big deal and why for $25, it's a steal at that price. So the company Hori, that is spelled H-O-R-I, Hori, the company Hori back in the GameCube era made a special made a special GameCube Game Boy Player digital controller. And it was a very odd and yet cool looking controller. How I would describe the how the controller looked to you, even though I can't visually show you one because I don't own one or show you a picture because, well, I don't have editing software. <laughs> I would describe to you the controller as this. Think of, visualize in your mind, or think of the shape and style of a Super Nintendo controller, but then take out the buttons that were in a Super Nintendo controller and replace them with the GameCube controller buttons, just minusing the analog stick and the C stick. But all the other buttons that were present on a GameCube controller, just picture them on a Super Nintendo controller. And that's basically how I would describe to you what the Hori GameCube Game Boy Player digital controller was. Now, I don't own one of them for two reasons. Number one, they were only made in Japan and never brought over to North America. And number two, I don't know the exact pricing because I haven't, I, I forgot to, I was going, I meant to look it up on eBay uh, before I started recording this video to see what that specific controller was going for, but I'm pretty sure that controller sells for like two, three hundred dollars used, mind you, used. And well, uh, quite frankly, I just don't feel like paying that much for a controller, let alone a video game, too. So when I found out that this third party company, Old School, was putting out their own version of the GameCube Game Boy Player digital controller at only $25 each, I was like, dude, I want one. I want to get one. I like what I've been hearing from the couple of videos that I watched. You know, sign me up. So, last Friday, not this past Friday, but Friday of last week, me and my friend Tyler, uh, you know him as Mr. Game and Squatch. I featured him a bunch of times on the channel. We went to our favorite small business video game store, Next Level Video Games. Shout out to Nick. He's the owner. <clears throat> and he bought a ton of these and was selling them. And so, lucky enough, there this one was still sitting on the shelf. And I was like, okay, I'm here. It's still here. I'm buying it. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. So, without further ado, <clears throat> I'm going to shut up and stop talking now. And let's get to the actual freaking unboxing of this controller because I am actually very hype and cannot wait to unbox this controller and like test it out, you know, feel how ergonomically it is in my hands, how well the buttons feel, the button membranes, all that fun stuff. So <clears throat> we have the front digital controller compatible with GameCube and Game Boy Player. For GameCube and Game Boy Player, features a 10-foot cable, a 10-foot long cable, wired controller. That's freaking awesome that the cord on this controller is 10 feet long. That's awesome. So, as you can see, I paid $24.99 for this controller, $25. So, here's the front. We have the left side, the 
we have the back. Play Game Boy games like you've never played them before. And it reads in English, 10-foot cable, reinforced shell, precise D-pad, and classic buttons. And over here it says, the old school digital controller is compatible with GameCube and GameCube Game Boy Player. Play your classic GameCube or hook up your Game Boy Player and play your handheld games on the big screen with the digital controller. This product was designed to work with Game Boy Player. Controller can be used with most GameCube, Game Boy, and Game Boy Advance games. The function of the controller buttons depends on the game. For details, see the instruction manual for each game. Okay, and then we got the socials. Old school accessories is on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So when I post a link to this video on Twitter, I will link uh, their account, their Twitter account. Okay, so we got right side, got the top, nice little hang tab, seal sticker here, and bottom. All right, let's get to it. Let's see how easy are you going to come off. I just kind of bent my nail. That felt good. Now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen that are watching, I know the official Hori brand one is stupid expensive, and you also have to import it from Japan, which sucks too. But, oh, jeez, and I just kind of ripped the box. Eh, oh, well. But, you know, keep in mind, <sighs> Hori is a very well-known brand and company. They really specialize in video game accessories. And when I, and when I say accessories, I mean usually controllers but i've also seen other like quirky stuff cases travel bags what have you but when it comes to hori as a company they're primarily known for their video game controllers <clears throat> excuse me at least i like to think they are i don't know maybe maybe that's just maybe that's just what i think but okay Okay, so box is empty. I can go aside. Controller is here. Get a little close up on that. And we got, wow, that looks like a super long cord on this wired controller. Nice. I'm loving that already. Okay. Side aside. And here is our controller. Wow. You can just smell the cheap Chinese plastic shell. No, seriously, you, you really can. Like, the smell is very noticeable, and, like, you don't even have to put it that close up to your nose. You can just smell it. It's just that apparent. And wow. Wow. Look at this nice long 10 foot long cord on this wired controller. That's what I'm freaking talking about. Yeah, that's how you freaking do a wired controller in 2021. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so how does it feel in my hands? Whoa. Wow, that's a really clicky D-pad. I like that. I actually really like that. So, ergonomically, I like the feel of how this controller feels when gripping in my hands, if that makes any sense. Okay, I'll tell you what right now. That's a hell of a friggin' D-pad for it to be making that much of a clicking noise. It almost reminds me of SNK's Neo Geo arcade-style controllers with the clicky joystick. 
Obviously, this is not a joystick, though. This is a D-pad. So, D-pad feels really good. I like that. The start and select buttons feel like... Like the Super Nintendo pause and select buttons. So, we got A and B. Wow. They feel almost like the genuine A and B buttons on a regular GameCube controller. Then we got the X and Y buttons. Yeah, I'll tell you what, they still feel like the freaking genuine X and Y buttons on a regular GameCube controller. Wow, that's crazy. And then we got the Z... Uh, I don't know, is this a button or is it a stick? I'm... I'm going to call that a button because it pushes down. That feels okay. I don't really know what that's supposed to feel like. And then we got the L and R shoulder buttons. And that's it. So this is obviously the front of it with all the buttons. Oh, we got the back. Uh, top and bottom. Okay, so first impressions of this guy right out of the box, I like it. I I seriously like it. Like, I, I I'm not trying to sound like a broken record here, but ergonomically gripping and holding this controller in my hands feels really good. Although then again, I do really like the Super Nintendo controller and. That's probably why I like this controller that much, because it's in the shape and style of a Super Nintendo controller, but it's got the different buttons than a Super Nintendo controller. So, right now, at this point in the video, I want to do some comparisons to other controllers that I own that are similar to this controller, even though, like I said before, I don't own the official Hori brand GameCube Game Boy Player controller. So, first and foremost, we're going to compare this to a regular, a regular GameCube controller, because I just think I should, because, you know, why not? Now, Unless you live under a rock or have never owned or played a GameCube before, then you should obviously know what a GameCube controller looks like, at least a regular standard GameCube controller. So, that is a direct side-by-side -side comparison. Now, obviously the shapes of said controllers are very different, obviously. But I will say, I really like how, like, okay, the A, the A, B, X, and Y buttons are the same compared to a regular GameCube controller. That's great. I find it interesting that for this controller, that the start and select buttons are two separate buttons, like on an original Super Nintendo controller, but on a regular GameCube controller, there's just one start button, and it's start slash pause, and I love how they put that there too, start slash pause. Now, of course, there's no analog stick on this like there is on a GameCube controller, and there's no C stick on this like there... Uh, yeah, there's no, there's no analog stick on the regular GameCube controller. Blah, blah, blah. There is no analog stick on this like there is on a regular GameCube controller, and there's no C stick on this like there is on a regular GameCube controller. Now, I get why the Z button is here, because the L and R shoulder buttons on a regular GameCube controller are here and here, and they're still there and there. But the Z trigger button was on the right side here, and there's no freaking room to fit that, so that's why they put it there. Although, in all honesty, I'm kind of questioning why specifically did they put it there, but you know what? I didn't make or design the controller, so 
far be it for me to ask that. So, okay. So that's a regular GameCube controller. Now, I have an actual Super Nintendo controller here with me to do a side-by-side -side comparison of. And then I have another controller because it is in the shape. So here we have an official genuine Nintendo brand Super Nintendo wired controller. Doing a side-by-side -side comparison of these two, it's really like, wow, that's just so much alike. It's like, it's, it's not even funny. So the D-pads on both look identical, at least to me. The start and select buttons, again, look identical, at least to me. What is different is when it comes to the A, B, X, and Y buttons, they are just completely different because on the old school brand one, it does not have the same buttons as on an official original Super Nintendo controller. It instead has the GameCube style A, B, X, and Y buttons. And that's cool, man. I'm, I'm fine with that. Not, I'm not saying that is a bad thing or a complaint. I think that's really cool that they did that. Now, of course, on a Super Nintendo controller, there is no Z button, so you're not even going to see that on that. And then, you know, lastly, we got the L and R shoulder buttons. Now, what is also interesting is that there's little bumps on the left and right sides of the old school controller, but on the Super Nintendo controller, there is nothing. Like, I guess you can call these grips, but I, I think that's a bit of a stretch even calling them that. So, yeah. Now, last but not least, the last controller I have here that I mentioned that I want to do another side-by-side -side of, and then that's going to do it for this little unboxing video, is my 8-Bit Doe SN30 Pro Wireless Bluetooth Gamepad. Now, why I bothered to even include this in this video to do a little comparison of is because it's in the style and shape of a Super Nintendo controller. Now, I'm sure, you know, if you're familiar with 8 and are familiar with this controller, then you're probably thinking, you know, why is he even including this in the video? Because this is neither a Super Nintendo controller nor a GameCube controller. And that's fair. That's a good question. And the only honest answer I have is because it's in the shape of a Super Nintendo controller, so I thought it would be worth mentioning and comparing. So, yeah, you know, again, similar D-pads, similar start and select buttons. The 8 one has two dual analog sticks. This obviously does not. The A, B, X, and Y buttons are different, obviously. Uh, this, uh, the old school one has a C, has a Z button, excuse me. This one does not. And then when we get to the shoulder buttons, the old school brand one only has L and R buttons. The 8 one has L1, R1, and L2, and R2 shoulder trigger buttons. And then aside from that, yeah, I mean... Uh, the old school one has the two bumps or ridges, if you want to call them that, you know, whatever, on the left and right sides to kind of give it a nice little grip, but the 8-bit dough one just doesn't. It really doesn't even have any uh, grips or ridges in the sides of the back of the controller. Okay, guys, so that's it for my comparing this controller to other controllers. And I'm going to give my final thoughts about this controller, and that's going to do it for this unboxing uh, slash first impressions video of this controller. Okay, so for the $25 I spent on this controller, am I happy with the product that I got? Yes, I am. Do I like, do I like the product? Well... I do like it, 
Although, I have one complaint about it so far. And my complaint about it is that it feels too light, you know, and, and it just, it just feels like that there's nothing inside of this plastic housing of the controller other than the board and the button membranes. That's it. It, it, it just feels really light and I guess because it feels light, it, it, it kind of has a cheapness feel to it, if you will. And, you know, I don't know. To some people, that might turn them off. To me, it doesn't. And it doesn't really bother me. So, I'm okay with that. But, at the same time, it because of it feeling as light as it does, it just really has a cheap... It, 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 it has a cheapness feel to it because of it being as light as it is. Other than that, I really do like it and I can't complain because, uh, you know, in all honesty, I'd rather spend $25 on a third party company controller than spend, oh, I don't know, three, $400 on the official Hori brand one. Yeah. So would I recommend you to buy this controller if you don't already own the Hori brand one. Yes. Yes, I would. I think it's a good supplement or replacement, if you will, of the Hori brand one. Although, of course, would I say it's better than the Hori brand one? No, absolutely. Even though I've never even held or tried the Hori brand one, I just automatically know it's it's not going to be better than the Hori brand one because the Hori brand one is made by Hori. They just make their stuff so well and top notch and you know very high quality that of all the companies, it's very hard to make a product that's better than something that Hori puts out. So, although I I will give it to old school, I think they did a very good job. On this controller, again, I just don't like how light the controller feels, and because of it feeling light, it has it has a it has a cheapness, a cheap quality to it feel, if you will. So other than that, I really do like this controller, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this unboxing video and me talking about this for kind of a long time now. <laughs> so it I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and please let me know down below in the comment section if you've bought one of these controllers, and if so, what do you think of this controller? And if someone who's watching this happens to own the official Hori brand one, tell me, you know, do you think is it worth the money? Is, is it worth the money that you would have to shell out to buy one of those controllers nowadays? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and take care.